Hello. Hello. What's your name? My name is Nico. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go to high school? I went to high school in Houston. Did you like it there? Um, it was our, it was okay. It's very humid. It oh very, really? Very warm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you not like like the warm weather and stuff? Uh, I like warm weather. It's just that it's when it's too humid, it just feels like you're being suffocated. <laughs> it's just very like a, a presence, just oh, pressing you down all the time. It feels like you're walking in an oven if it's hot enough. Oh, that sounds um, awful. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> What, what year are you? Like, what school do you go to? What year are you? Uh, so, I currently attend UTD. Um, this is, I just finished my junior year, and I'm gonna be starting my senior year in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm in a transitionary period. Mm -hmm. what, what major are you? I'm a marketing major. Why did you choose marketing? Um, I just always really enjoyed uh, Looking at advertisements when I was a kid, um, and like being like, "Oh, this one's great. This this is a great ad." And then looking at another ad, it's like, "I hate this ad. I never want to see it again." And <laughs> normally, it's the ads that they paid the most to like repeat. Like for example, recently Google's like uh, promoting their security or something like that. Uh -huh. and, you know, I, I, at least I keep getting ads about like, uh -huh. "Oh, you know, Google security or something like that." And it's like the same ad over and over again. If it, and it's people just trying to type in their passwords and not being able to get in and it's like cool the first time but like they just keep shoving it down your throat and so it just becomes mm. a really bad ad um, really yeah oh because I've, I've been getting an ad recently like yeah. all the time but Loki is making me want to buy it <laughs> what, what's the ad it's like it's like um <laughs> I don't want to say it out loud <laughs> but it's something but it's like it's like um it's like it's really useful, mm -hmm. and so like a lot of people have been using it. But like, it's also like it's a, I they say it as like like a you can use it any time, like any weather, um, like you can swim with it and stuff like that. And so like I'm like really intrigued, but at the same time like I don't trust like the internet, Loki, because like yeah. I feel like they can like you know market things a certain way, yeah. and they're not me, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you say you go to UTD, right? Yeah, I do. So what's the most memorable experience you've had at UTD? I think my most memorable experience at UTD is having to interact with the people at UTD and seeing how they interact with other people. Uh, I think those are experiences that will come with me for the rest of my life. Um, but yeah, I, I know it's very vague, but uh, I just like the people. The people are the most memorable thing by UTD. Are you a people watcher? Do you do you sit in the coffee shop and like stare at me? You know, I I really enjoy it, but I don't get to do it too often because I feel like I'm kind of a big person and I'm also a guy, so I have to be very self-conscious about like staring at people because people <laughs> will get intimidated or they'll be like, Weird oh my God, this weirdo is like staring at me. Um, so like maybe like if I'm on the streets of Paris and I'm like oh. sipping a coffee by like a, you know, like one of the coffee shops that has like uh, the chairs pointing towards the street. Maybe I'll like do it there, but I very, very rarely, uh, maybe on occasion, people watch. Mm, are you gonna, you gonna just like look, look like this? Yeah, I mean, I'll give like, I'll give like a bombastic side eye every <laughs> once in a while. A bombastic side eye? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but I try to avoid it, yeah. Mm. So like going to UTD, like um, you're working towards your marketing, you know, uh, bachelor's, right? Yeah. So like through that experience and like internships and stuff, what is your biggest professional inspiration? My inspiration, I think, would have to be my my cousin. He he works at a. Uh, it's not exactly marketing. He does like a, he works at a communication um, uh, firm in Argentina, and he kind of uh, inspired me to continue on this path. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's why. What what about him inspires you? What does he do that? He just uh, there's a certain way that he carries himself. Um, and he's just very dedicated to his work, which is inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. um, so he's very friendly, you know, people like talking to him. And so he's been a great inspiration for me. Mm -hmm. So you aspire to be like dedicated and like a people person, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so what's the, one of the biggest lessons you've learned in your career? Kind of like what mistakes have you made? Uh, how's the journey been like? I think um, one of the biggest learnings that I've taken from my career is um, over-promising 
uh, not to overpromise. If anything, underpromise and overdeliver. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know, I kind of get the vision of uh, what this would make, like how this project would become, you know, ten times better. And I get really married to that idea, um, and then sometimes that idea can't come to fruition because you know time constraints or what maybe. Mm-hmm. So um, that's kind of my biggest learning curve. It was you know taking a step back and you know if I'm able to over deliver, do that, but don't don't promise that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you know the final result is what the final result is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like when we're like college students, I feel like we want to dream really big yeah. and we want to do like all these crazy things. But like sometimes like we don't have the technology or the knowledge it takes to do it. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, so now that we talked about your mistakes, how what are your biggest professional accomplishments? Like what are your biggest wins in life in your career? <sighs> My biggest wins. Um, I think for me, one of my bis- biggest wins is uh, having been able to promote and work for Amazon. Um, I didn't work with them for them directly. Um, it was more of a joint collaboration. Um, we were promoting um, the the Good Doctor. I don't know if you've heard. Yeah, they they, they were oh, promoting that. that. Yeah, so they were promoting the show, the final season. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was able to work with them on that and you know I think that was a great accomplishment I kind of got to see an insight on their promotional side of things and what their strategy was um, so yeah how was like like what was your role in that like did you work in the marketing department or like, how yeah. did you get to that position first? so I, I kind of just applied for some jobs over the summer I was or not over the summer over like a um, an, uh, an exchange program um, I I just applied for a few jobs and there's a firm that picked me up and they just ha- so happened to be working with Amazon and you know I was their marketing intern so I kind of helped up set up the displays, made sure that everything looked nice, um, talked to customers one-on-one, mm-hmm. um, direct promotion type thing. Um, but yeah, it, it was just, and also like sitting in on the meetings and you know, taking notes. But, Are you an exchange you know. student? Um, no, I'm not an exchange student, but it was like a study abroad type deal. Oh, so yeah. you study abroad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's very cool. So does that impact how you see yourself in five years? Um, you know, I'm, I'm really in a transitionary period. It's really hard to say um, where I'll be in five years. Um, I'm kind of exploring different professional opportunities. Uh, if I stay within marketing, though, I know I definitely kind of want to go a similar route. You want to go and go di- car- <laughs> the creative director route. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I, I identified with a lot of the things you said, like, oh, making sure, like, you know, this looks good and telling people exactly how I want it. Um, and, you know, controlling that vision, mm-hmm. um, that's kind of what route I'm going to take if I continue with marketing. Oh, that's cool. Um, in your, so you talk about your five years, um, through your, your job experience, what do you see as, like, important traits to have in your colleagues and managers? Like, what would make a workplace more viable for you to choose? Yeah, I think uh, independence is at the center of it um, and clear definitions. Uh, I think that if you give somebody clear enough scope of the project and what exactly it is that the end result has to be and then um, giving them employees freedom to like uh, pursue different avenues as long as the end project it's completed, I think that's the biggest thing for me. Mm-hmm. So it's just clear instructions and independence. Clear instructions and independence. Oh, okay, that's very good. Uh, what drew you to a marketing sales internship or this champion equipment finance internship? In general? Um, I kind of saw this internship as an internship where I could do a little bit of everything um, and really get exposed to as many things in a, in a short period of time in a professional setting as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's kind of one of the biggest things that drew me in. I've also um, you know, since high school, since I knew that I wanted to pursue a career in business, I you know, I was fascinated by the finance industry and, you know, um, more particularly to personal finance, but, you know, I never thought that I would be able to work in marketing in a, uh, in a financial setting. And so, you know, this is also a great, um, I guess, stepping stone in case I want to go in that direction and work in the finance industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to work in the finance industry? Like what kind of position you want to do? Um, 
I mean, it, it just really depends, like I said before. Like, I, I'm kind of looking at different avenues. Um, I'm trying to keep as many doors open, open as possible. Mm -hmm. um, if, I want, if I end up working in the finance industry, I'd probably take on more of a sales role. Uh, wow. Because uh, with finance, it's kind of, there isn't a whole lot you market. You know, you market your credit cards, you market your, your loans. Um, it's more sales focused than marketing focused. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's some marketing involved. But uh, if I do continue into the finance sector, I definitely want to go with a more sales route. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. I, I know somebody that um, marketed the Sapphire card mm -hmm. for Chase. Um, she did a really, um, she was a really high up in the company. Really? Yeah. Interesting. That's why I was like, I, I was thinking about that. Um, so, what are some things you want to take away from the internship? Um, some deliverables. I want to be able to like put things on my portfolio and be like, oh, mm -hmm. look, I did this. Look at this, how pretty it is. Um, uh, but yeah, that's and experience, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, being a lifelong learner is the goal. So always learning from from an opportunity. Do you have a portfolio right now? Um, yes, but it's very limited. It's got like just a couple of things and some projects that I'm still working on. Yeah, work in um, progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so what are some driving factors when it comes to work? Like, what motivates you to be here every day? Um, what motivates me? Uh, the paycheck. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, what motivates me is, uh, again, you know, this mentality of lifelong learner, just always learning, learning mm -hmm. something new, um, and you know, getting, you know, learning hands-on. You know, you know, there's always a theory. There's what they teach you at school, but you know, there's. You know, there's so much more value in doing it yourself. Mm, makes sense. Yeah. And then uh, these are more like the four fun questions. Uh, what are some of your hobbies? So my hobbies, um, I really like to draw. Um, ever since I was a kid, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's just a lot of fun. It's a good way to release, uh, you know, energy or relax or you know, do a little doodle. Mm -hmm. um, I also. Uh, I, I really like watching ads. Ants? <laughs> ads, yeah. Oh, I, I, oh. Yeah, ads, 80. I think they meant ants. Ants? No, no, no. Oh. Um, yeah, so I, I like judging ads and just like if, if I'm watching TV, I won't, or YouTube, I won't skip the commercials. I'll like, if it's a new one, I'll look at it and be like, this is a good ad or this is terrible and this is why. What makes it good? What makes it bad? Um, it just depends on what you're marketing really. Like for example, I, I remember one that um, it was for uh, Dior with uh, uh -huh. uh, Ann Taylor Joy that we were just uh -huh. talking about her. Yeah. Um, and they were marketing a uh, new line for whatever. I think it was makeup. Perfume? Uh, no, it was makeup. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. And so they had Ann Taylor Joy and she was like decked out in this like um, cheetah print type thing, uh -huh. and it was just a video of, of them asking her a couple of questions, um, and I don't know, I don't remember the exact questions, but um, the essential vibe that they gave, and this was also during Valentine season, so they had like Valentine colors, and you know the feeling that the ad was projecting was a feeling of confidence, right? One of the questions was, for example. Um, pronounce Christian Dior, right? But like in French. And so it was like her like obviously getting it wrong, like Christian Dior or something like that. And then at the end it's like, um, she keeps repeating it and it's like, she she finally gets it and it's like Christian Dior or something like that. And then it like cuts or something. Um, and so just being able to transmit that feeling of confidence really is, um, is just what made it a great ad. Um, and then compared to like other ads so what, that do this sometimes it like stopped airing after <laughs> after Valentine's. Mm -hmm. um, looking at Google, which won't stop sending me ads. Um, <laughs> They're tormenting you. Yeah. It's from the dark web. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, what's the best meal you've ever had? I think the best meal that I, I've ever had uh, is probably just um, a good old. Uh, in Argentinian barbecue like uh, it's not the same thing as an American barbecue because we don't really use sauce mm. uh, it's just you know salt maybe some pepper if you want it on the meat mm. and you throw it on and you slow cook it uh, and it's just a great time because it's not just about the meal it's about the experience mm. you know having fans, friends family mm. over uh, and just making a day of it 
Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, because I know that like with certain meats, like they if you put so much sauce in it, you don't really taste the meat yeah. anymore. So it's yeah. like what's like what's the point, you know? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, there's you're just masking the flavor of the meat. You, know? mm -hmm. you don't yeah. taste it. And then uh, I think you answered this already, but um, what's your favorite kind of drink? Uh, my favorite drink is uh, mate. Um, it's just like a traditional Argentinian drink. Um, you can look it up. You spell it the same way you'd spell mate. Um, so uh, you just search up uh, mate drink and then it'll come up. Mate drink. Uh, yeah, if you want to learn more, very interesting stuff. Very good for you. Very tasty. Well, depends on your taste buds. In his opinion. Yeah, in my opinion. Um, what is your favorite TV show? Uh, I would have to say my favorite TV show. Um, I think ah, this is a hard question. I think right now my favorite TV show is probably uh, Yellowstone, but that's just because I haven't finished it yet. Um, I just I, I really like drama and politics and things like that. So mm. like it's that show is literally all about that. It's just <laughs> like politics and drama, and I really <laughs> liked it. Um, so currently that's my favorite TV show, but I don't know about of all time. Of all time, yeah. yeah it's kind of hard, right? Yeah, yeah, it's really hard. There's so many good things out there. And so if you could have a, any superpower, which would you pick? Um, probably uh, the power to print money. <laughs> Just being able to like print uh, legal US dollar bills. Oh, um, only US dollar bills or any kind of currency? I mean, any kind of currency. Um, but because I'm in the U.S. right now, you know, do that, uh, and you know, just break any economic system by printing out what massive you, amounts of currency. Can you create Bitcoin? Um, and like, you know, all I the mean, it's a currency, right? Yeah. Can you create it though? I mean, if it's a currency. Anything? Oh, that's so bad. I feel. I feel like you might turn into like a super villain. Yeah. I mean, that's like one. <laughs> That'd be fun, isn't right? It? Yeah. To yeah. become the super villain, so nobody can like mess with you. That's true. Yeah. And then what do so your weekends look like? Like what are your hobbies? Uh, what are my hobbies and what are my weekends like? Um, right now it's a lot of studying. Um, what? Uh, I'm do doing some summer classes, oh. so I spend a lot of time studying and if I'm not studying, I'm eating out or I'm going to a park or doing something with my girlfriend or mm -hmm you know, playing sports. Mm -hmm. That's what my weekends and hobbies look like. Oh, that's fun. Um, what do you usually do with your girlfriend? Like, what do you guys do? Yeah, like we go to the park, we play sports, we'll watch Yellowstone. Uh, <laughs> we like to debate a lot. So we'll like come up with it. We'll be walking around and we'll come up with a topic and debate that. Mm, yeah. Makes sense. And then if you turn into a blob one day, what's the first thing you do? And, uh, probably the first thing I do is probably freak out. I'll be like, what's going on? Assess the situation. Huh. Um, in terms of like voluntary action, I'd probably see how I could exploit being involved to my benefit. Mm -hmm. Like maybe doing a show or something. To get, <laughs> show. Yeah, make money. Uh, make, get scientists to experiment me on for a boatload of money. Yeah. That would hurt. Well, you're a blob, so you probably don't have a nervous system. You don't think so? No, because you you're a jellyfish. A jellyfish don't feel. They don't feel? They don't even have a brain. What about Ditto, the Pokemon? Ditto? Yeah, the Pokemon. Ditto is... Um, does he have a brain? But that's not a blob, that's a Pokemon. That is, that's not, that's that's not a justification. Pokemon, eh? It's a Pokemon blob. No, but that Pokemon like turns into like other Pokemon. It's like, you know when you know when you're uh, when you say blob, like imagine um, you know Robin Williams' film uh, Filbert or something like that. No, I don't know that. It was like basically Robin Williams, and they made like a CGI little blob thing that was uh -huh. like super bouncy, and it was like um, uh, it had an, an intelligence of its own. Um, so that's like what that's I imagine. You. Oh yeah, <laughs> you and me that one, Mr. Yeah. Gilbert. Um, and then if you were an animal, what would you be? Um, I like being a sea turtle. Um, not to like be a cop out and give an answer since it's already been done before, but like sea turtles just seem like super chill. Mm -hmm. They're just chilling, swimming around, mm -hmm. and live to be like a hundred and something. Oh, you want to so, live long? Yeah, I mean, if if it's nice, you know, if it's not nice, I, I'm okay with dying. <laughs> like if like we ruin this planet, like, you know, oh, everything's true. on fire, you know. The probably, water is contaminated. Yeah, exactly. If you were in an industrial vehicle, what would you be? If I was in an industrial vehicle, I'd probably, uh, I don't know if cruise ships count as industrial vehicles. Are they? They might. Can we find a friend? Uh, can we? Uh, it doesn't matter. I'd be <laughs> some kind of boat. Um, oh. Just chill out at sea. Uh, oh, you like the water? Yeah, I like the water. Would I mean, you be a mermaid? Would I be a mermaid? Or a merman? 
merman. Um, uh, no, because like there are sharks and stuff. Those are scary. And but you're a merman. Yeah, but you like have magical powers. Yeah, but like it's like I I don't know. I like being on the ocean, but I like being above the ocean because like below uh, the ocean that kind of freaks me out. <laughs> and there's just so it's like much. A frog. Under. Yeah. Um, and then how would you describe your style, like personally, fashion wise? Um. Currently, I don't really think I have a, a really defined style. Uh, I'm kind of like trying to clean up my wardrobe. Um, I'm trying to start with mute colors and blues and things like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't think I really have a defined style yet. It's mm -hmm. just my style. Nico's style. style. Nico's style? Yeah, okay. Nico's style. Yeah. Great. I'd love to do that. <laughs> <laughs>